So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go through these scammers files and then I'm gonna delete them. Is your computer running any faster? My computer? Yeah. Are you connected with my computer? Let's talk about these files. He's got a resume, which he's gonna need a new one. Uh, here is our friend, Chumay Pham. He's from New Delhi. He's got a whole lot of anime that I'm pretty sure he pirated. Do you ever watch anime? Or anime, I guess that's what they call it? Yes. Okay, let me get that going. And then the final file, or the final thing, is he's got this file that's essentially like a scammer handbook where his boss is giving him guidelines that he has to go by. Even scammers have to go by rules. This guy is in New Delhi on like 111th School Road in like an apartment on mm -hmm. School Road in New Delhi. I'm sure you're mm -hmm. from, because you're in New Delhi as well, I would assume. <laughs> Maybe I approached that incorrectly. I honestly was really shocked that that guy, that somebody picked up. Thank you for calling support. My name is Ryan, how can I help you? Hi Ryan, um, I do apologize. I was just on with John, my cell phone just died. The scams that John is running um, is the McAfee scam. And it's just a typical refund scam. They'll connect to the computer bank account and have you transfer a bunch of money to them. You guys emailed me, it yeah. says that there's yeah. a $409 charge. Yeah, so John had me download um, something on my computer. It says mm -hmm. AnyDesk EXE. All right, you can read me out the address, okay? Yeah, I, I do end up connecting to this guy's system. It's glorious. It's the best feeling, honestly, because there's that moment of like hesitancy from the scammer. Like, are they gonna let you on or not? You have to kind of coerce them into accepting. And once you get on, it's game over for them. To send and receive messages, <laughs> register in your Alexa app. Computer, stop. Jeez. <laughs> Technology. I would say this is one of my easier connections, actually, because he seemed like an idiot. But the crazy thing is he's actually scammed a lot of people. So he seems experienced, but it was easy to get on the computer. I mean, I think sometimes you catch the scammers like this guy at the right time. Uh, maybe it's really late at night. Maybe they're done with the shift. Maybe they're not thinking uh, as critically as they could. Sometimes they're under the influence of something, maybe a little chattis, maybe a little something else. As soon as we connect to the system, we're trying to get files immediately. That's the first thing. And this guy honestly had like a treasure trove of files. It was like, it was a gold mine. It was amazing. All the files that we did get and collect for evidence, we kindly removed them from his system as well. I'm touching the screen. Can you see the mouse? Yeah, I can see everything. I can see mine and yours. All right. All right. All right. Just sit back and relax. Let me open something for you and I'll give you some of my information also. Do you have any best practices for like cleaning up, like cleaning up the PC, uh, like deleting any of the files yes. or anything? Does that help? Or? Correct. Yes. Yeah, okay. we, we can do that. Yeah, that's right. Like deleting okay, files? I can clean or? up the machine. Yep. I'm just going to do some cleaning up as well, okay? Just real quick. Uh, all right. Just delete some of these. No, I can... Yeah, I can, I can clean up with that. Let me connect with you first and I'll help you out with that, okay? Do you ever watch anime? Or anime, I guess that's what they call it? Yes. Okay, let me get that going. All right. Is there anything I'm else I'm supposed to be doing or...? No, if, if it is done, that's okay, okay? Yeah, I was definitely trying to help him clean up his computer. I think, like, as an honest scam baiter, I want to help everybody out. So I wanted to help make his system faster. I said that to him. I was like, listen, is your computer seem faster now? Um, it should be running a little bit faster when you have all these files that have been removed. So I was just trying to help out. Let me get rid of those. Try to help get your computer a little bit faster. Is your computer running any faster? My computer? Yeah. Are you connected with my computer? No. Uh, how many files did I delete? I don't know the exact number. It was hundreds, I would assume. Um, but I, I don't know the exact amount. But the amount of files we deleted, I think the importance of the files versus the number, those files are gone forever. That's one of the beautiful things about any desk is once they're gone, they're gone. And again, we had um, unlimited access, I'll say, to this guy's computer. So we're able to confirm that those files were gone. So like the next day we could go back and make sure like, hey, okay, it's not like this guy just double clicks the recycle bin and drags it back over. It's gone forever. Um, 
Is this Chumay? I'm sorry? Is your name Chumay? No. Okay, it's not. C-H-U-M-E-I? No. Okay. What about Long Tikam Saktum? Who is that? Who's Long Tikam Saktum? Oh, there he is. So we downloaded a bunch of files. We got them and I started going through them literally live on stream to see what he had. What is this anime that he... You, anybody know what an, this anime is? Anybody know what this is? Well, it's not on his computer anymore, but... So we saw information on a lot of the scams previously he had run. Currently running McAfee, but he had also done like tech support scams and Amazon scams and things like that. So it was really actually sad to see all the victims where he had stolen. I think I said like almost like fifty thousand uh, dollars worth of money from innocent victims just in my couple minutes of reading the uh, the files. There's a victim that was using M Prize Bank and they saved the freaking password. Wow, what is this? He has a blessed text file that has like so many victims on it. Wow. He charged somebody $1,500 for um, network support. Another $2,000, $5,000? No way. That one scammer file had so much information on all their victims. Just one file had information like checking account numbers, routing numbers, bank login and passwords, and even debit card information with security codes, expiration dates, everything. Our security partner Aura deals with these threats every single day. Aura provides things like fraud monitoring, AV, and even password management in a single application. They're gonna go out onto the dark web and scan for everything that they can find of yours. Things like your emails, passwords, phone numbers, social security numbers, you name it. This is why we talk about how there are victims every 14 seconds of identity theft to the tune of about $1,000 on average. Scammers and hackers are using this information every single day and Aura will go out and notify you when they find your information so you can go take the proper action. If you don't think it's important to know this information, I can guarantee you that your information is being shopped right now on the dark web to hackers and scammers alike. Go on over to Aura.com payback for a two week free trial and you can even put your own information in and see what is out on the dark web of yours. Now it's time to get back into the scam bait. Here's this resume. Chumay Pham. He's from New Delhi. It's funny that this keeps popping up on every connection we get with the scammer. They always have resumes, almost as if like they know that they're going to have to get a new job soon. Good things like they'll say they're well-educated, critical thinkers, good listeners, etc. Good on computers. Basic knowledge of computer for sure. But none of those work when they you know meet scam baiters like me. So. <laughs> Sorry. That's good. I mean, I was just. That was good. That was good. When I was talking to the scammer, the funniest part to me was we we're on the stream and we were able to pinpoint where he was and we just went to Google Street View. This is where the scammer is somewhere in one of these places, working somewhere, essentially. And the cool part was it was on the computer as well. So he's on the system and we're going to Google Street View and like showing him essentially where we were. No scammer likes it. Imagine you're trying to steal from someone and they're literally pulling up your building, your location, like pinpointed to the road, the number of the road, everything. We're scrolling through the building. So I would say that's like the biggest moment uh, where you know you've got them and they know you've got them too. Computer has to be connected with LAN cable, not Wi-Fi. I wonder why. Because we know your exact location now. To be able to get an IP address, that's awesome. And that's just one piece of the puzzle. It's a general location, kind of a, a fence around the location, but it is not pinpointed. I mean, it's not the be all end all. It's cool to know kind of the city and general location, but you're not gonna get exactly where they are. We have some capabilities and some methods of literally finding exactly where they are, which is awesome because uh, it's pinpointed to a few meters essentially. So you can feel pretty confident like, hey, uh, you're right across from the ice cream shop in downtown Kolkata. And you say that specific thing to the scammer and they're like, oh my gosh, how does this guy know that I'm next to the ice cream shop? And it's a very powerful thing. Like, not only have we been watching what you're doing, we know what you're doing, you're hurting people, and we know where you are. It could be this, it could be there, it could be there, it could be there, it could be there, it could be up there. I don't know. But that is where the scammer is.
I remember to like, even a couple of years ago, we had some videos where uh, we had some insiders at the call center that were, they were just tired of it and they gave us information, photos, things like that. And we were able to tell them like the color of the walls and all that. And now we have, we, we've upped our capabilities to pinpoint literally every scammer that we're connecting to, like their exact locations. And we are going to build out like a huge chart of all the connections, all the locations. So it could be one scammer in an apartment or a hotel. It could be a chain of scammers. It could be a call center. It doesn't matter, but we're going to track all of them and they're going to start going to the authorities, which is really cool. This is a very interesting one as well. This might be from the company he works for. We'll kind of read this really quickly together. What was inside of the handbook was essentially a rule set that the scammer bosses kind of implemented. After remote share, customer ID, password on the group and wait for group response. For Windows computer, first preference need to give ultra viewer and for Mac comp need to give any desk applicant. I don't know what some of these means. It almost seemed as if the rules that they put in place were like if you were at a call center, this is almost like pre pandemic or pre all the raids that were happening. So a lot of these scammers, like I've said in other videos, they're going to like apartment complexes, hotels, all these shared workspaces and things like that, and trying to get away from the big call centers. I mean, heck, I've even heard recently they're traveling literally in vans, like moving vans and stuff to scam people so they don't get detected. It's, it's freaking crazy. These guys, a lot of them are working from home now, uh, but the rule set, I remember one of the lines like talking about like being able to take smoke breaks. Breaks need to be taken care not to extend dinner, break in 30 minutes, tea break for 15 minutes, have to pause when going for any break. Or bathroom breaks and things like that. If you've worked for a certain amount of hours, you can take a little break here and there. And then even like how long you should be on the phone with someone, if they're taking too much time to speed them up, move them along the process. In case if not able to take remote to do conference call with bank, take note of the balance, which will be the count and the transfer, right? And it even goes down to show like some of the commissions and stuff like that based off of how many successful opening calls that they have and the ones that they moved over to like the closers and stuff like that. Openers incentive. I think this is really interesting. Perfect opening bonus means no late opening and no uh, opening. You get 3000 Indian rupees. Perfect opening bonus two means up to three late, you get 1500. So maybe they get 3000 rupees for getting like on a computer and passing it over. I think that's what it is. The commission sheet had, had it kind of broken down uh, based off of like openers and closers. And um, again, the openers and closers, it's pretty self-explanatory. You have the first folks that get the calls. Their goal is to connect to the victim's computer and kind of go through the initial script. So they connect to the victim's computer and then they will pass that information along, the connection information, and then they'll also kind of transfer through the phone system, the victim to the closer. Let's just break it down for like 100 calls. They had all these different tiers. If 15% of your calls, if it's 100 calls, so 15 calls get passed on to the closer, then you get X amount of money. Transfer ratio, total transfer divided by total number of calls times 100. Let's just say it's, um, you get 10,000 rupees for that 15%, then you'd make X amount of rupees per call that you transferred over. So every call in between there, you're losing money if you're not transferring them to the closer. Every call landed will be counted. Kind of interesting, guys. Even the scam bait calls will be counted. Let's call this number up, actually. Hello? Thank you for calling support. How can I help you? Yes. Um, actually, I was just reading you. I was reading your office rules for like the percentages of money you make and stuff like that. Are you in an office or do you work from home and you transfer to somebody in New Delhi? Maybe I approached that incorrectly. I honestly was really shocked that that guy that somebody picked up. Thank you for calling technical support. This is Alan. How can I help you? Hi, Alvin. Um, I'm actually just curious, are you guys working out of a single office or are you guys like spread out in apartments and then you forward the calls to others through the Telegram group? Because actually I'm looking at some of your files here and I, don't, I hate that I'm messing up your transfer ratio, but I just wanted to get a little bit of information on you guys. Do you mind helping me with that? Who are you? Can you tell me that? Uh, Pierogi. Oh, all right. Uh, do you mind? <laughs> I'm just, they have to keep, the, the, I'm burning into their money. It's getting rerouted to all these different people. Thank you for calling support there, Sam. How can I help you today? Hi, Sam. Um, I'm just, I'm curious. Are you guys working out of an office or do you work out of like the apartments and then you forward the calls to the uh, to the closers? I'm looking at one of your documents 
on like opening and transfer ratios and all that. And I just, I was honestly really curious about it and how you guys work. Don't know about others, but some people work in offices and some in apartments. Okay, okay, because this guy is in New Delhi on like 111 School Road and like an apartment on mm -hmm. School Road in New Delhi. I'm sure you're mm -hmm. familiar, because you're in New Delhi as well, I would assume. Mm -hmm. Do you know like any of the offices like that are actually like connected to this group? Mm -hmm. Is it? It's okay, you can tell me, tell man. You. I'm not trying to be mean to you, I really am not. I'm just doing like investigation. <laughs> Nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna tell you about it, okay? Why? If you know us, why, I man? can't answer your why. I know, you ha I know you have your job to do. You're not gonna hear from me ever again unless you wanna come work for me. Like, do you guys? <laughs> no. Why? Thank you. Bye bye. Sure. You know, the scammer hung up. He's obviously very nervous because think about trying to scam from somebody and they're telling you the exact location that you're sitting in at that moment. Like you're thinking someone's sitting outside your window, filming up at you, looking up at you as you're scamming somebody. So it must be terrifying, but that's what these scammers deserve because this guy's taking a lot of money from people. I do want to say this one thing to all the scammers out there. Do you have trouble with your computer? Is it running slow? Do you want a little PC cleanup? We'll call scammer payback and we will delete all of your files so your computer runs squeaky clean. I'm sorry, I had to do a funny <laughs> I had to do a funny one. I'm sorry. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. All jokes aside though, you know, I want all these scammers, whether you're one or you're one thousand working at a call center, to be afraid of the work that we're doing. We're gonna keep fighting you guys, we're gonna keep exposing you. And please accept my any desk connection sometime, all right? This has been Prague with Scammer Payback saying don't get scammed.